Hi. Right now we're going to be going through a section on miscellaneous punctuation. Miscellaneous just means a variety. Just grab some. <laughs> so we're going to be doing semicolons, colons, dashes, and hyphens this time, and then next time we're going to be doing other miscellaneous punctuation that you need to know. Um, these are things that you should already know, but we are going to review them. Um, semicolons are used for several things, and colons are, can be used for things that are quite similar. Um, there are some times when it's open to interpretation which one to use, but one thing that they have in common is that each one of them comes after an independent clause. An independent clause, again, is something that can stand alone as a sentence. Okay, so a semicolon is more like for joining uh, independent clauses. That's more its flavor. Um, a semicolon is used to join two closely related sentences without a conjunction. Okay, for example, we had too many fumbles, we lost the game. In that case, you could say and we lost the game. You could say, so we lost the game. In those cases, you would need a comma before that coordinating conjunction. But in this case, whoever wrote this sentence that I copied um, needs, to uh, needs to make sure that they put a semicolon and not just a comma there. <clears throat> that would be the most common mistake with these types of sentences. Um, because we have a whole independent clause here, and a whole independent clause here, therefore we need a semicolon. Um, and you can't just join to any two sentences with a semicolon. Um, the second one has to somehow logically follow the first one, like in this example. Okay, it could clarify the first one. Um, there are other ways that it could logically follow it. We'll look at some of those when we have our meeting and from the book. Um, animation has become very popular, however, live action films are more popular. So above that it says, use two, you, <laughs> I, I wrote the wrong two, use to join two sentences with a conjunctive adverb or transition. Um, so here we have the same kind of thing, two independent clauses. But now we have the word however, which is a conjunctive adverb. An example of a, tr a, of a transition uh, could be something like in other words, or something like that, um, as a final thought, you know. So um, when you join two sentences together and went into one sentence with a, one of those kinds of transitioned words or, or phrases, then you need to have a semicolon before the conjunctive adverb or transition. Here you have the semicolon. And then a comma after your conjunctive adverb or transition. And we'll look at some of those again in the book. I'll go, uh, next one says, use to avoid confusion when joining um, independent clauses that have commas. So in this case, it would be grammatically correct to just have a comma after fruit there, but uh, a semicolon helps the person who's reading to follow the thought better because there's there's a comma and it just becomes a little bit confusing and what we like in English is to make things as simple and easy to follow as they possibly can be so it says I'll go to the market to buy some fruit and while I'm at it I'll stop at the bank and so here we have the a complex sentence with an introductory adverb clause with a comma here and um, in this case it probably wouldn't have been that confusing not to have a semicolon there but that was the first example I thought of in my head um, but here is it's perfectly fine to have a semicolon there um, and the next one says use to avoid confusion with a series of items containing commas and I often use this example of, of a series of city, country, city, country. There are other things that, again, we'll find when we look in the book, I think. Um, but my example, on our trip, we're going to Paris, France, Moscow, Russia, and Amsterdam, Holland. And if somebody didn't know um, better, 
And if you just put commas, it would sound like you're going to at least five places, if not six places, um, on your trip. But actually, this is only three places, and so we're putting a semicolon between each place. So hopefully that's clear. And then finally, um, yeah, no, that's the that's all for semicolons for now. For colons, use the colon again after an independent clause to introduce a list. Okay, on our trip, we'll see three important landmarks, the Louvre, the Eiffel Tower, and the Kremlin. I underline Louvre because it's in French. Um, not sure, I don't think you have to, you don't think you have to underline or italicize the other ones. But I put a colon here because I have a whole sentence with a list. Up here above, it says on our trip we're going to, many people, students, a lot of students would put a colon after the word to here, before the word Paris, but um, actually you should not put a colon after a preposition, which is what this is. Um, you need to put a colon at the end of an independent clause. And the way you know it's an independent clause on here is I could stop there. Our trip will, on our trip, we'll see three important landmarks, period. I don't have to tell you what they are, period. But if I were to stop there, here, on our trip, we're going to, period. No. Okay, so if you can stop there and it makes a sentence that makes sense, then you can put a colon there. If you can't stop there and make a sentence that makes sense, then you go straight on and don't put anything, okay? Um... Next thing, use a colon to introduce a clarifying clause. This is where it gets a little muddy because um, you could use a semicolon or a colon. Um, a, co a colon means, and this is what it is, and look at this, something like that. Uh, this is why pollution is bad. Okay, so I have a colon there, and since I have a colon there, then I'm going to tell you and here it is, this is why, this is the reason, okay? We're sacrificing our health and wealth, uh, I'm sorry, we're sacrificing our health and the health of all other life on the planet. Okay, that's why it's bad. So that's, it has a colon because I'm pointing out something. Here, we had too many fumbles, and here it is, we lost the game, that doesn't really work. I hope you're seeing the nuance that means the slight gray meaning <laughs> there, uh, slight difference there. Um, and then the next one says, use a colon between a title and subtitle. Let's watch Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. A lot of people say that's the best movie in the Star Wars pantheon of movies. But anyway, as the case may be, it does have a title, Star Wars, and a subtitle, The Empire Strikes Back. And there are many other, I don't remember how many other, Star Wars, colon, The Revenge of the Jedi. Star Wars, colon, okay. Uh, that's, sub, that's title, subtitle. So that's it for colons and semicolons. Now we're looking at hyphens and dashes. Oh, by the way, semicolon, dot over comma. Uh, colon, dot over dot. Okay, hyphen, short line, dash, longer line. When you're typing, if you just hit that little dash button one time, it makes a hyphen. If you hit it two times and then space, most word processors will go ahead and turn the two hyphens into a dash. In our Google Forms on the exams, um, you, it doesn't work that way. I don't think it works that way. I'm not sure whether it works that way on Google Docs or not. So there are word processing programs that don't form a dash for you. But if I were to look at your assignment and it were to have hyphen hyphen right next to each other, I would assume you're talking about a dash. Um, hyphens need to have no space before or after them. Okay. And... Um, Dashes should have a space before and a space after the dash. Okay, so with all of that mechanics underway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out a couple of things about hyphens. There is more than that in your book, but I think it's better to look at what it's saying in the book than for me to go into it in this video. Um, so more to come about hyphens, but what I want to point out is this. 
use a hyphen for some numbers. Three fourths, 37, okay? So when you're talking about a number, a fraction, three fourths, 99 one hundredths. Although you probably wouldn't say that, you probably just say 99%. But anyway, 37. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't think of any other examples that are really different from that. Use a hyphen for some compound words. So sister-in-law, extra special, fat-free. Especially with, um, with compound adjectives um, uh, that are... Okay, these two, these two compound adjectives are kind of more of a prefix or a suffix. But let me think of another one. A compound adjective, for example, hot water bottle. I don't know if you know what a hot water bottle is. It's a, it's a container that you put water in, you can heat it up, and you can put it um, like against your back if your back's hurting or against your leg if you have a sprained leg or something like that. Um, it's kind of like the opposite of an ice pack. Um, anyway, a hot water bottle. My um, So hot water coming before the word bottle. Um, yes, you do need to hyphenate it. But if I were to say a bottle of hot water, then I, we were not using it as a compound adjective. Okay, we're just using hot adjective water noun. So we don't need... To hyphenate it and we'll see some more examples probably better examples than the one I just gave you when we get to the book like I said more about hyphens when we get to the book and you'll kind of see why I wanted to wait for that we, we get there dashes use a dash or two for an abrupt interruption so the reason you might use two is because you might have um, a, a part of a sentence then an interruption and then the sentence might continue and that would be where you would need to use two dashes, one before and one after the interrupter. In my example here, we only have one before because apparently I lose my whole train of thought. Uh, we've been here watching for, oh look, there's a squirrel now. Okay, so um, I was talking and I saw the squirrel and I interrupted myself. So that's an interrupter there. Um, use a dash or two to make, to make an appositive a bit more dramatic. So this here is an appositive, and you could just put commas around it. But as you'll see, it's a little more dramatic than your average appositive. He spent my money, the last of the money I had, on something stupid. Okay, so this, the last of the money I had, renames my money. Um, so it is an appositive, but I wanted to be dramatic, so I used dashes. Be sparing on dashes in your writing. Um, some people get carried away with dashes. And, um, because, and it just looks like you're always being super dramatic in everything you're saying. And that's not necessary. But we do need to learn how to use them properly. So as you can see, I gave a little, uh, I gave a little space before and after each dash. Dashes need a little breathing room. In English, we do not use dashes for quotes or dialogue. Um, the only time we would use a dash for a quote is like if you just have the quotation, that's something that somebody said, and then you, and then at the bottom you put dash and the person's name. Um, then like on a, on a meme or on a sticker on Facebook, something like that, um, then that would be a good place for a dash. But other than that, um, they're not used to indicate so that somebody said something. I understand that in many novels and other books written in Spanish, you use a dash to indicate dialogue or speech, but not almost never in English. Okay, We use quotation marks for that. So let's be clear about that. And we'll go into more detail in these in our Google Meet. Please don't forget to come to that. And that's all I have to say about that. Happy working.